Hello everyone. Welcome to the Veterinary Parasitology Lecture Series. This is Dr. Alim from Chattrogram Veterinary and Animal Sciences University. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss about one of the important parasitic disease, which is esophagostomiosis or nodular worm disease in animal. So in this lecture, I would like to highlight the important species of nodular worms, morphological features of them, life cycle of the nodular worm. Finally, I would like to conclude this lecture by highlighting the pathogenic significance or pathogenesis, clinical manifestation, and finally diagnosis of esophagostomiasis or nodular worm disease in different animals. Under the superfamily Strongyloidea, one of the important genera is esophagostoma. And the major species uh, for sheep, goat, camel, and different other antelopes is uh, Esophagostomum columbianum. And for sheep, goat, uh, there are two other important species. They are Esophagostomum banulosum and Esophagostomum aspersum. But for cattle and buffalo, uh, the important species is Esophagostomum radiatum. And for pig, the important species includes Esophagostomum dentatum, Esophagostomum bibicordum, etc. And there are some other uh, species under the genus Esophagostomum that also important for uh, different wild animals such as monkey and different other primates. So all these parasites located in the large intestine, especially cecum colon. And here, the distribution of all these parasites are listed here. For an example, Esophagostomum columbianum, the distribution is worldwide, but they are mostly found in tropical and subtropical areas of the world. And another important parasite, Esophagostomum radiatum, they are also distributed worldwide. And all these uh, parasites are responsible for causing a disease, which is called Esophagostomiasis. And this parasite, commonly known as nodular worm, because they produce nodule in both the small intestine as well as large intestine. Morphological features of Esophagostomum columbianum. So grossly, the parasite is whitish in color and up to two centimeter in length. And micro there are different microscopic features, which is important for the identification of this uh, Esophagostomum columbianum species. So the first one is buccal capsule. Buccal capsule is cylindrical, narrow, and shallow. There is both uh, internal and external leaf crown, but for Esophagostomum radiatum, the leaf crown is absent. And here you can see the ventral group, the ventral cervical group. So there is a ventral cervical group at the anterior end of this parasite and anterior to this when, uh, cervical group the cuticle is dilated to form a cephalic vesicle which is another cuticular modification you know and there is also presence of cervical papillae and cervical alley so versa is present in um, male and which is very de well developed and there is presence of two equal wing-like spicule you can see here and for the female uh, the tail tapers to a fine point indicated here and vagina is short transverse leading to a kidney shaped parts is a tricks of the OV sector you can see here So life cycle of Esophagostomum columbianum, life cycle is direct there as there is no involvement of intermediate host. The adult male and female will be found in their predilection site that is in large intestine and the female parasite will lay eggs and these eggs will be passed through the feces and within six to seven days at optimum temperature there will be development of L3 uh, in the environment and this L3 will migrate to the tip of the grass blade. Final host will be infected 
uh, after having this L3 with the grass. And when this uh, grass reaches to the small intestine, the L3 stage will exceed there and penetrate in the wall of the intestine and they will migrate to the migrate in the wall of the intestine and as a result there will be an inflammatory response finally this will lead to the development of nodule in the wall of the intestine and within this nodule there will be a molting that is from L3 to L4 stage will be occurred in the nodule as these nodules are sometimes separated so the L4 state will continue their migration throughout the uh, intestinal wall and they will produce new nodules throughout the intestine and meanwhile some of the L4 states will find their way to the lumen of the large intestine and in the large intestine that is in the lumen of the large intestine there will be another molding L4 to L5 finally they will become adult parasite and for the completion of this life cycle it takes around six to seven weeks pathogenesis of esophagostomiosis or nodular worm disease in animals so if anybody asks you what's the pathogenic significance of esophagostomiosis or nodular worm disease in animals you could say there is nodule formation in extensive cases there will be extensive nodule formation in the wall of the intestine which is also known as pimply gut that ultimately results disruption of the absorption leading to different uh, development of different clinical signs such as decreased growth emaciation and production loss but the pathogenesis of esophagostomiasis starts with the penetration of l3 in the wall of the intestine so two situation will be discussed here the first one is animal without previous exposure of the nodular worm and the second one is animal with previous exposure of the nodular worm so in case of animal without previous exposure of nodular worm the l4 will migrate in the wall of the intestine and there will be less or no inflammatory reaction as a result there will be no nodule formation in the wall of the intestine and in this case the l4 will migrate or will find their way to the lumen of the intestine and in the lumen of the intestine there will be another molding that is l4 to l5 and finally this l5 will become adult parasite so the take-home masses in this situation that is animal without previous exposure of the nodular worm there will be no nodule formation in the wall of the intestine but more adult will be found in the uh, lumen of the intestine and in the second scenario second situation animal with previous exposure of the nodular worm same same thing that is migration of the l4 within the l3 within the mucosa and there will be a strong inflammatory reaction uh, that will encircle the l3 stages of the parasite and there will be uh, nodule, more nodule formation in the wall of the intestine in case of the sheep and goat the size of the or diameter of the nodule is two centimeter but for cattle it is around five centimeter and the nodule will contain suppurative uh, mass that is yellowish or greenish uh, pass and this l4 uh, again leave the nodule and they will start uh, migrating in the wall of the intestine and they will again uh, start producing new nodule having the same content due to the inflammatory reaction so there will be new nodule formation and also uh, this l4 will leave the migratory tract that will also contain the pus that is content of the same nodule so there will be extensive nodule formation and this condition is called pimply gut <clears throat> and this nodule uh, will have some small small opening and through this opening they will uh, leave the nodule and they will migrate in the wall they will start migrate in the wall of the intestine and sometimes uh, some of the nodules will find their way to the intestine so nodule uh, will have the small opening through which uh, the parasite will leave 
and uh, will migrate in the wall of the intestine as a result and in this case few L4 will find their way to the lumen of the intestine and there will be less adult in large intestine that is animal with previous exposure there will be more nodule formation in the wall of the intestine but there is less number of adults will be found in the large intestine so all together there will be nodule formation and if there is rupture of the nodule formation there will be hemorrhage leading to leakage of the blood into the gut and this will contribute to the anemia and in chronic cases there will be hyperproteinemia and due to the rupture of the nodule there will be ulcerative colitis and triphlitis and if this condition doesn't heal there is uh, chances of perforation of the intestinal wall leading to peritonitis and ultimately animal will die and if there is perforation there may be ad adhere to the other part of the intestine and there will be a lot of multiple adhesion and this will lead to interrupted bowel movement so due to the nodule formation or extensive nodule formation in the wall of the uh, small or large intestine so there will be disruption of the absorption and this will ultimately lead to the development of uh, development of different clinical signs such as decreased growth rate emaciation and production loss clinical sign of esophagostomiasis or nodular worm diseases in sheep goat cattle that is in ruminants so in acute condition uh, there is severe dark green diarrhea or persistent diarrhea and there will be death of the animal unless removed from the infected pasture in case of the cattle uh, there will be dark fatty diarrhea and according to the literature 200 to 300 adults worm may cause severe infection in young sheep and other clinical sign in acute infection includes rapid weight loss sometimes submandibular edema and in chronic infection anorexia emaciation with intermittent diarrhea anemia other clinical signs diagnosis of esophagostomiasis or nodular one disease is animal so for this uh, we should look for the clinical signs that i have already mentioned and we should go for the coproscopy in acute cases egg may not be found uh, but l4 can be found in the feces but in chronic cases characteristics eggs can be found and the treatment uh, we should go for uh, anthelmintics therapy so broad anthelmintics can be used for the treatment of nodular worm disease so these are the reference books that i have used during preparation of this presentation and i have also taken a lot of open source information from internet and thank you for watching this video and please stay with this channel to get more videos on uh, helminthalosi thank you